Yeah, thanks for coming along, everyone. Um, this book uh, that we're talking about today is um, pretty much channeling our uh, our greater ethos as a newspaper, and, and I'll, I'd like to pass over to uh, Prime Minister Turnbull to talk about that and, um, and and the position we play in the Australian media and, and the state of Australian media in general. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 thank, you, thank you very much, Clancy, and it's uh, great to be here with a federal member uh, for Batuta. Uh, the, uh, this, uh, this is, of course, is uh, Australia's um, oldest newspaper, so it's asserted, that's yes. very good, and uh, of course uh, published in uh, one of Australia's thriving metropolises, Batuta. Uh, and I want us to say that there's a great example here from the Batuta advocate that other media organisations can take up. Threatened by the digital revolution, formidably challenged by Facebook and Google, many have cried foul and unfair. Stop doing it to us, you digital giants. What does the Batuta advocate do? They diversify into beer. They know that is one thing that will never go out of date. And I'll stick with it. And I see Craig Laundy here says that's on a winner too. So I'm very pleased to be here to la launch. Got, you've got it. Very good. That's very good. Uh, and uh, what? very happy to launch uh, Batuta's Australia, a guide to the great southern land by Australia's oldest newspaper, a satirical newspaper, but one of the good things about this satirical newspaper is they know they're a satire. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Good on you. Questions? Yeah, we'd just like to point out that it's independent regional news. We don't, we don't um, go by the term satire. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, this, this is a book that, um, that, that bursts a lot of bubbles. A few things happened over the last couple of years in world politics that made people question, well, no, the, the polls said this. And uh, I think this book will help everyone here because uh, you don't often find a, a nation as poorly represented as the nation we have when we look around us today with both politicians and journalists. So there's a few bubbles that need to be burst. Uh, plenty of different demographics in here from the uh, Yayar in uh, Oakley with the concrete you know, front lawn to the, uh, you know, the First Nations households in Acacia Ridge with the bully beef and Michael Jackson CDs. Straight to the jet ski owner in uh, Skomo's electorate over there. You know, we've uh, we've, we've, we've uh, covered everyone, and um, it's actually the eleventh edition. I'll let Errol tell, tell a little bit about that. Well, just a little bit more about the book in general. Uh, I've had a lot of questions here. They've asked us why this is the eleventh edition, but this is the first edition they've seen. And the reason behind that is, is that this is a book that is an amalgamation of all the stories, of all the tales, of all the Batutanese people. <laughs> that uh, when they leave town, they come back with these stories, with this knowledge, and all of that knowledge is updated each year. And it's given to the youth of Batuta before they head out into, in, into the world. Uh, it's kind of like the, uh, like the Diamantina version of the Amish Rumspringer. Um, so earlier this year, we spoke to the fine people at um, ABC and the ABC's News Corp wing, Harper Collins, <laughs> and they said, uh, would you mind putting this book out uh, nationally? Uh, would you rather this have a national audience? Because this book did garner a bit of a cult-like, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how to say it, but uh, lots of people wanted it, uh, <laughs> who didn't have access to it. Um, which we thought, you know, we might as well stick the ABC pig while we had the chance. So we said yes. The news Corp arm of the ABC. And, uh, Collins, ABC books. And yeah, so here it is uh, for every Australian to enjoy. And I'd just like to say um, this will break down a few stereotypes, hopefully. You know, we, we were talking about bubbles before and there's a lot of communities that don't get acknowledged and they're not immediately acknowledged in this crowd. Um, a lot of people from different backgrounds. Uh, you know, I think if Cory Bernardi were to read this book, he'd realise that his constituents don't really care about little boys wearing dresses. They just want to uh, find out when uh, they're going to take a tax break on Farmer Union iced coffee and uh, <laughs> when the next Hilltop Hoods album's coming out. That's the biggest concern for his constituents. And 
The same goes for Albo, mate. They don't care about workers' rights or public housing. They just want a cafe that serves wheatgrass shots with free Wi-Fi. That's your constituents. You've got to think about them. And of course, Tony Abbott, there's more gays walking around your electorate than there is in the Young Liberals. So I think, I think, I think we need to break down a few barriers here and we start looking at everyone in this country. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for coming along. Help yourself to the beer. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Can we get the uh, Prime Minister a, a, a silver bullet? Yeah.